Okay. Well, uh, hi everybody. Uh, um, my name is Ramsa Mocha. I'm the director of uh, Draw to Perform, and we're in the second visit, uh, uh, our second online visit uh, in this program, where we're visiting uh, artists uh, that relate to performative uh, drawing. I would like to thank you all for joining us here and for all the people that are uh, starting to uh, follow us on the live stream on YouTube and uh, on Facebook, sorry. Um, and so uh, just a few words uh, about the program. Uh, well, uh, I specifically uh, directed this program to um, for us, uh, artists and uh, everybody that interest in uh, performative drawing, to uh, be able to follow uh, other artists that do that uh, investigating the same uh, practice, and to uh, open a, a, like open a little door uh, for artists uh, studio and. Uh, to be able to give a stage and to be able to discuss uh, their practice, uh, to um, see a little bit of their work, the, their current work, and also uh, uh, have a glimpse of uh, the actions that they're doing privately in their studio. Um, yeah, it's, as you know, a difficult time. And uh, I think uh, it's just, keeping us together in a way and uh, hopefully it will continue after this uh, situation uh, will disappear uh, and we will back to normal and today it's the second uh, visit that we're doing and uh, we have artist Liza Manley with us from New Zealand uh, did I pronounce it right? Mangle, yeah, totally. No, Man Manly. It's a, yeah, Lisa Manly. <laughs> it's all right. Manly, sorry. It's it's constantly with every yeah. artist. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but it's not personal. Uh, yeah. Just my dyslexia. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm really, really, very happy to have you with us. And um, Lisa participated in the last Drop to Perform uh, uh, festival, uh, which was in 2018 uh, in Brighton. She came and uh, did a beautiful uh, performance uh, that combined uh, line, uh, reflection, and uh, sound. Uh, she worked with a local art, uh, a local musician and together they created a really impressive uh, work uh, that we may see uh, later on um, a little bit uh, from this work. Uh, but uh, I would like now to ask Alma, uh, maybe please to uh, read a little bit uh, about Lisa, please. Alma? Hi. Hi. Lisa Monley is a Wellington-based artist whose practice is a close and constant study of materiality and examination of the relationship between mind, matter, action, and form. Experiential methodologies of action, reflection, and transformation underpin her performative installation. A signature of Monley's work is its embodiment of both economy and excess. Formal constraints within the work contrast with the sheer scale and materiality of her drawings. In one of her solo shows, Munley created three large wall drawings on site, ranging between six meters long and three meters high. The scale of these works, installed over a seven day period, transformed the drawing process into a public event, positioning her practice at the boundary of drawing and performance. Munley's research celebrates the agency of matter. Her site specific installations operate as a stage upon which materials are called upon to act. Continuing the traje trajectory of her work's focus on the enactment, analysis, and celebration of material capacity to both perform and transform. 
Thank you, Alma. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think there, there's a lot uh, said there, but uh, um, since 2018, uh, Lisa created, uh, last time uh, we collaborated, Lisa created the uh, a really few uh, interesting uh, performances uh, and of course uh, studio work, and I'm thrilled to have you here, Lisa, with us. So. Welcome. Oh, thanks, Ram. I'm thrilled to be invited to be here. I um, I really value what you've set up here and this opportunity to connect. I think quite often, just in having a performative drawing practice in New Zealand, I feel a little bit isolated. So back in 2018, it was great to be able to come over, and it's like, oh, these are my people. <laughs> these are all people who share my my interests. So that was really lovely, and especially now. In, in this time, you know, we're all kind of um, in our own little lockdowns. It's, it's been really lovely to be able to connect once again. And um, yeah, I think last month, getting a glimpse into um, Kevin's beautiful practice, um, yeah, it was really rewarding. And um, rather, um, I got very jealous of his uh, lovely big studio <laughs> space as well. But yeah, no, so thank, thank you for the opportunity and for setting this up. Really I don't know if Kevin is here, but uh, I can thank uh, uh, again Kevin for being the first artist uh, mm -hmm. and for the exper experiment, uh, but and for the beautiful talk he gave uh, back then. Uh, yes, so back to you, Lisa. Um, well, I'm, I'm uh, you know, like uh, take it uh, from here and. Uh, the program will, will be like a presentation with Lisa and uh, a little discussion between me and Lisa, and then we'll open it uh, for other uh, people to uh, to participate and uh, to ask questions. So, yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Um, well, Alma, in reading that out, put it much more um, astutely than, than I'm probably going to just say in person, but. I guess I would describe uh, my drawing practices as an embodied sort of experiential focus or what it means to, to be in a body that makes marks and is marked in turn. So I'm really interested on the experience of the artist during the, the process. So it's quite an inward um, looking kind of drawing practice really. Um, I'm just going to share my screen and I think maybe I'll just give a little bit of history to to ha perhaps how I got where I where I am now so I'll just if you bear with me I'll... can you see that okay you see it guys I yeah. can see it I hope other people can see it too um, I'll just scroll so my practice um, originated out of a um, drawing practice focused on, on life drawing. And I was particularly interested in the affect of time or the different time sketches on the um, artist. I found that I enjoyed the shorter sketches. Um, I enjoyed drawing and I, and I preferred the drawings that came out of them. Um, those sketches with a shorter time span for drawing than the longer sort of, um, you know, hour plus sort of drawings where I felt that they became overworked and I was much more conscious of every mark I made. So I enjoyed the kind of much more spontaneous, um, shorter sketches. Um, so that's where an interest in time and the effect of it upon the artist originated from. I found in an academic setting, I was just starting my master's at this time, that representation of the body and of the nude body um, became very kind of loaded. And every time there was a discussion around my work, it sort of veered back onto the, the politics of the gaze and the fact that I was drawing nude bodies. And, I, and I, to be honest, I wasn't really so interested in that discussion. I knew it was probably one that warranted um, having but but I was more again interested in, in, in time and the effect on the artist so 
because my crits kept getting hijacked onto, onto the nude body, I ended up um, dropping the body and uh, uh, opting for a large um, abstract works that employed um, scale as a strategy for um, duration. So the body is still present in the work, but rather than it being the, the life drawing model's body, it became my body, um, the artist's body. And this was a body that had its own um, measurements that um, through extended uh, drawing periods revealed itself to tire and um, to, to skew, skew the marks. So I was really interested in that um, patterns of fatigue that emerged um, through creating these environments where I'd be drawing for long periods of time. And I think that's why I'm kind of interested with hearing um, Kevin talking about his practice um, last month as well. So some of these drawings were quite large. This was about, an eight, I couldn't fit it in the camera, but it was about an eight meter um, long drawing. And this line here was just created by the natural tendency of my arm to move up as I drew away from the body. So I was interested in the, the, um, yeah, the unforeseen uh, marks of the, of the body. Um, I was also interested in the materials ability to perform. And I, I started considering the design of these works something like a stage upon which these materials could act. So this is a nice example of, of that. So this is a piece that responds to the internal um, skylight of the gallery that ran the length of the gallery. Um, and it's a four meter long, four meter high uh, piece of um, board upon which I've just drawn uh, charcoal back and forth, sort of um, emulating the skylight. And this faint line down below, this is the exhausted uh, charcoal that has dropped down from that, from that line being repeatedly made there. So um, yeah, I think um, creating or unearthing the, um, revealing the innate potential of, of the materials. Um, so because these works took often a you know, number of days to, to execute. Um, it would be that it, it emerged that I should probably just open the gallery and let the, let the audience in over that time rather than, than sealing it off. So that's kind of how the performative aspect came in. Um, and whilst I feel like I do have a performative drawing practice, I am very, I am uncomfortable in the, performance space myself. Um, I know that there are a lot of dancers who operate in this space who whose bodies that you know beautifully kind of controlled tools. I'm I'm not a dancer, <laughs> definitely not a dancer. I, I feel myself more akin perhaps to a miner where <laughs> I'm digging away, chipping away, and hopefully um, through these repetitive acts, unable to unearth, expose, reveal uh, some sort of gem or, or aspect, hidden aspect of, of the, the material. So because I'm uh, not hugely comfortable in, in the performance space, um, I quite often devise ways to, to remove myself from it. So that might be um, employing the cutting edge of the frame so my body is outside of it or it might be um, devising um, the presentation of the work to keep me hidden. Um, a nice example of this perhaps could be a work I did it for Performance Arcade in 2019, Drawn to Light. So this is an ongoing um, arts festival um, initiated and, and directed by um, the New Zealander Sam Truebridge. And it's usually um, 
it's a series of musical performances, but also a series of containers. So every year um, he will bring in a number of shipping containers and they will be set up down on Wellington Wharf and he'll invite artists to propose occupying those containers for um, the duration of, of the, the festival. Um, so this, my proposal, um, I was interested in how a drawing could sit or how a drawing performance could work inside a shipping container. Um, I was interested in this idea of drawing as a way to um, hold on to or capture presence, going back to the, I think it was the early um, original kind of myth of, of the origin of drawing where the, the young woman traces the outline of her lover soon to depart on a long sea journey with a candle against the wall. So I was interested in this idea of of drawing as a pre-sentiment of absence, of drawing what you know is going to be leaving or moving. And um, yeah, I see line quite often as a marking of a temporal state. Uh, so that was the sort of premise that this idea was built upon. And um, these are just little sketches working out the how to occupy the shipping container. Um, so I ended up dividing it into three sections and I was um, concealed within this uh, center section. It's probably a better way to do it. Um, the first section, the audience would come in here and this, would, this was a large kind of frosted wall um, and they'd sit down on a chair and a light would be shone on them. And through that frosted wall, I could make out their outline and I'd be sitting and drawing their outline and then the drawing that I would do there was another wall behind me would be rear projected onto this uh, screen so they could enter in the back of the container and um, see the drawing that ensued so that was a rather um, elaborate way to keep myself out of the audience's eye but um, yeah it was quite quite an experience actually um, undertaking that that scenario sitting inside a container for a um, number of days on end. Um, hardly anyone came in during the day. So I was just sitting there tootling away, twiddling my thumbs. And then everyone would come in at night, there'd be like queues and I'd be really sort of boom, boom, boom. So it was very much a story of two different states with that work. I might, um, Ram, I might try to switch between my other camera and just show some Work that came yeah. out. Lisa, can I ask you to show the the drones that came out of this uh, last project that you just talked about, please? But yeah, shall I go? I've got some drawings here, so oh, I think I could. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll just um stop that share, and I'll use my snazzy other camera view. Hang on, I've been practicing this. Okay. Here we go. So this, this is my my studio space here. So I think this is aimed right, so you should see my thing. So yeah, it was really interesting drawing. Um, these were the, this was sort of um, initially the sort of test, one of the test pieces that I did of my uh, son sitting just to see that the concept worked. And then um, these are the drawings that I did of, of the audience. Um, they're all strangers to me. I never met them. So it's kind of adds a, an interesting element to the work where uh, really it was only my own family members that I recognized. My um, um, One of my children came in wearing a hoodie, but I still managed to recognize them under that. But I didn't recognize anyone else, so. Um. So, Lisa, can you talk a little bit about the material that you choose to work with? In those yeah. Days. So this is uh, this is my practice is probably um, not solely, but charcoal is uh, a big um, a, a material I've used for a long time. Um, I 
in the, as you saw in that earlier work, playing with the um, drawing a line. I've been particularly interested in the in the exhaust or the the detritus of, of of when you're drawing with charcoal, the dust that's left behind. So um, this is a follow on from that more abstract playing with the dust falling to actually drawing with, with dust. So this is powdered charcoal that I'm actually painting painting on. With no water added? Yes, just with water and a brush. And um, yeah, quite sort of, these are quite quick sketches. So, uh, you know, sort of two minutes long, perhaps. Um, I see the powder is quite still there because usually it's very, uh, it's, it's disappearing. Uh, after yeah, probably because it's been trapped in the, in the water. Uh -huh. um, I haven't fixed these with fixative. I, I'm meaning to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's because it's trapped with the water. And there is some lovely kind of, um, I don't know, relationships with the, it was interesting with the, with the water and the fluid. You can see with this one, I think there's a, yeah. the water sort of running down. With some of them, I mean, you couldn't always, there was a lack of control that I liked, but sometimes the water would run down in places you wouldn't necessarily want it to, like they had a runny nose. So <laughs> it was really even But um, yeah, so it was, um, it was really enjoyable. And it's quite nice to have a collection of, of portraits of strangers now as a result of that. I ended up doing uh, about 100 portraits. So nobody came and asked for a drawing after he said or she um, well they couldn't because i was sealed in my container <laughs> they, never <laughs> <got> to... <laughs> they, they never got to meet me so we remained i like that aspect of just remaining remaining hidden from from each other um, i've just got a work back from uh this was a piece that's just been touring um this is a you can see it's a little bit more worked this is a piece of my partner Stephen and that's just got into the um it's been touring as part of the Adam portrait um exhibition so yeah it's nice to have that that back someone did want to buy that but I wouldn't I wouldn't sell that because it was of, of my partner uh -huh. I'm not sell Um, yeah, and uh, the most recent work, um, I'll just switch, the most recent work that I have uh, done has also been for the Performance Arcade. Um, I've just finished a work that was slightly different and that it wasn't um, in a container, it was part of a music series so it was on stage and um, <clears throat> I was interested I did a collaborative work with a dancer uh, Sasha Co Copland and a musician uh, composer Simon Eastwood and so we got to collaborate on a piece called Three Turns which was um, really interesting. It was like uh, last week or? Uh, the 21st of Feb, yeah, so quite recently. Um, I might, I can share a little bit of that footage, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I've got just a little snip of it. The, the footage is yet to be synced up properly, but I'll just see if I can um, FaceTime. I'm just going to share screen. Um, so this is just a little clip of um, the... Oh, excellent. Oh, hang on, I'll just try and... It's for the first okay. time now. Yes, this is... Uh... So it hasn't been synced up properly yet, but I will to the proper audio, but this is just a little... Uh... Okay. Little 
Come on. What are you doing? All right. Uh, hey, videos. Videos. I don't know why that's taking so long. It's only like one that's minute. Quick for... um, maybe I won't show that. No. Oh, well, maybe I'll just try and go to something else. What I could do is actually show the movement um, that I did in. Okay. Mm, where is it? I will have to follow it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I will put it up on my website as well. Oh, what? Um, Excellent. Yeah. Okay, but for some reason, it's, I'll see if I can come back to it. Um, but what I might do is um, set it up and do a live version of, of the action. Um, you'll have to, I'm going to use my computer. I had the webcam, but it was uh, going in and out of autofocus. So I've swapped things around. So I just have to do a slightly little uh, interesting kind of tilting of this camera. So I hope this will work. Don't get dizzy for a moment. Just going to, um, hopefully that you can see the paper okay. Yeah, really. Yep. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm just, uh, yeah. This again is with um, powdered charcoal. And um, this was the movement that I was going, that I, um, there were three turns in this performance. Um, it was, I did a uh, conference, out of a conference I uh, attended called uh, Drawing Sonography. I became really interested in preparing for that. I was really interested in the idea of drawing and liveness and this idea of um, improvisation and um, how much uh, time or rehearsal one does. So with this performance that uh, we did, we made the decision to kind of improvise and keep it fairly loose. So we only met for, we only met twice before the show, just to sort of discuss um, different, uh, I guess, different textures, different sounds, different um, drawing media. Uh, so we had kind of, I guess, a, a loose roadmap of, of what it was, but without everything, anything being too sort of pre predetermined. So I guess it's another, it's kind of an ongoing in interest for me is this relationship and drawing between liveness, uh, and and um, choreographed kind of cho choreographed kind of moments, um, which I guess goes right back to this um, to that life drawing that I started off with, where how to keep that kind of spont spontaneous <clears throat> aspect to it. As I, I am kind of a little bit of a control freak, so I feel that I like to with the improvised work I just did. It was a little bit, um, you know, I like to sort of. Uh, know what's what be in control of things but it is quite nice to to let that go and um yeah not have everything sort of circumscribed uh to just play with the the aspects that so in the build. performance uh, it, the the actions that you're doing right now were projected to a wall right or to a stage. yes yeah so it was an outdoor stage it was quite a windy day which added its own performative element um it was at nine o'clock at night so we had it was dark enough and um yeah so it was a live uh, projection with uh simon was a double bassist well one of those lovely big uh, double bass um instruments a bit like uh the uh, fantastic that was gus garside the musician from brighton yeah. um you, back in for 2018 for your piece but um, um, yeah, I was really attracted to the double bass as an instrument for that piece I did um, for Draw to Perform mm -hmm. um, because I really like the, the scratchy sort of nature, I guess the friction of the, the bow against the strings really sort of 
felt like the feel of drawing with the charcoal and, and the pressure and the force of the charcoal and the resistance against the, the paper. Um, what's been interesting in working with this last with this last work is how different sounds um, demand different tools. So um, for the first turn, um, Simon ended up, you know, he was whacking the outside of the double base and it was like, you know, that I can't draw, I have to change the medium that I'm drawing with to, to respond to that. So I ended up drawing with my, with my fingers. Um, this is the movement from the second turn and when the dancer and the saw this, she did very sort of, I guess, circular undulating movements. And Simon's uh, sounds became much more fluid and um, I guess sustained, um, not really having a musical language to draw upon. And then in the last piece that we did, um, the dancers led it. And uh, that was a piece that sort of had a narrative that that built up over time and it got quite sort of frenetic. Uh, so sort of towards the end of that last piece, the charcoal was snapping and flying and uh, yeah, it was, it was had quite a different energy. So so that was kind of quite nice to work with. Like we did have a loose roadmap. We knew that like the, the first piece, um, the instrument, the, the materials we'd use, the second piece I'd be leading with this one, and then the third piece would have this sort of building energy. But other than that, it just kind of revealed itself on the on the night, which was which was quite nice. So yeah, I, I've, um, this is kind of a new newish. Uh, this working with the charcoal for brush um, originated out of the 2019 um, the portraits that I just showed. Um, so now um, I'm, this is kind of the, the newest direction for me where I'm just sort of interested in exploring the, um, just the brush strokes themselves, the different movements, the depth, uh, um, and potentially how, you know, they interact with, uh, with sound or um, dance. So just to clarify, uh you are touching with the brush uh, first on in the water, and then you touch the powder. Yeah. How yeah. you so create wet brush, it. charcoal powder, and yeah. just dragging. Yeah. So it's a lovely. I mean, I think that's what I love about charcoal is that it's so responsive in, in its varying forms. Um, yeah, so um, I've got, I've collected from, from you know, from it in its stick form, I've swept up the, the charcoal dust and I've got uh, boxes of nubs of bits of charcoal and whatnot there. Did that give, did that kind of impart a sense of that? It's sort of, yes, I it's usually, beautiful. I think it's, uh, it's, I, I'm amazed by, like, you know, like it's, uh, it's a brush stroke and uh, yeah, and it's abstract, but uh, I don't know why, but I can see whales there. Maybe from, because you are from New Zealand, well, but uh, Whales, so, as in marine, marine animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, but anyway, uh, it's, it's beautiful. So uh, yeah, and, and I guess it were, it was totally, uh, a uh, different feeling when when the dancer uh, were uh, was responding to to those uh, strokes and uh, and um, and the combination between you uh, moving uh, the brush and and your hand and uh, the movement of the dancer of course combining it with the music um, yeah, to be to be honest, at first it felt a little bit like sensory overload because I I because with both of them with the dancer and the music it was sort of like it was yeah it was kind of I felt a bit overloaded at first about which one do I respond to, um, so I found depending on which piece uh, I would uh, be responding more to one than than the other. Mm -hmm. um, I I think I'm I'm have been quite interested in the relationship of uh, 
music and sound. And um, I have another work that's um, going to be in an exhibition um, mid-year here in New Zealand with um, Simon, the double bassist, where we explore the ephemerality of sound. I might just move that back now. Um, back over there. Um, yeah, where we explore the, the temporality of, of sound and um, because obviously working with a dancer and a musician, their, their pieces, they, their, their, their marks, their gestures, they pass and they disappear. So they were interested in the fact that like the dancer said, oh, it's really great sort of being able to see my movements and, and have them recorded in, in that way. Um, so with the, I'm just going to share my screen and go. Thank you very like much for uh, sharing uh, this uh, action with us. It's, it's always quite uh, amazing to, uh, for me to look uh, at uh, other people uh, making marks because I'm just like, uh, your, mar your marks were so precise and, and the tempo was uh, um, slower than I was uh, expected. And uh, yeah. it's kind of like, uh, make me think. Uh, uh, did you try it like uh, more like, did you try the pushing the strokes uh, more uh, um, quickly, and or how did you get to those to this tempo in a way? Um, I think just playing around with the medium, um, so finding a speed and a movement that drew out the marks I was liking from the material. Mm. Um, so. I if I use this is sort of allowing the, the brush to, to flex and play and just playing with different angles and slowly dragging it. If I had moved faster, it would have had a different kind of look. So um, yeah, I think it's it's born for me with this just out of how the materials and the marks that I was making, because I think that as drawers, we will do the performance drawing, but at the end we, we still want a, a satisfying drawing out of it um, as well. So for me, that might start off with what do these marks do and, and how does the movement perhaps speak um, with another art form? I, I, it's funny you say that the speed surprised you because in Kevin's work, when he showed his piece, I was really surprised by how slow that was as well because I thought that he was really, with those lovely little kind of dots that he was getting at the start of the mark, I thought that was kind of like, you know, very fast, but it was much slower. So it is interesting. You can sometimes, when you're looking at a mark, you you might be off when you're forensically sort of, you know, thinking how it's made. Um, this is just a still of the the shot. Just um, of the uh, here, uh, you 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 mentioned something really important. Sorry, Lisa. I, I just want to uh, say it again that you you mentioned that it's important for you to have. Uh, I don't think you said nice drawing, but what was the sentence that you said? Like, uh, is is it in, uh, what I'm meaning to say is is it important for you the the appearance of the final action uh, yes. overall? Yeah, yeah. I I am um, especially yes because especially because you're uh, presenting it to the public. Um, I think I, before I do a performance, I'll work for a number of different things, auditions of different things that won't make it and will never, because I'm not happy with the, with the mark they make or the form that they coalesce into. I think as a visual kind of person, um, you don't necessarily want to show those, those things. I mean, in the studio, if I do a bad drawing, I'll screw it up and, and get rid of it. I just don't like looking at it, you know? <laughs> so it's about kind of, First of all, trying to find um, this, a form that you can tolerate, I think, to borrow the words of a different artist that I read once, you know, searching for a form that you can tolerate. And I think that's, uh, uh, for, for me personally anyway, uh, yeah, I, I feel, uh, yeah, I, I'd feel unhappy. And, and you know, I, I'm aware that to other people, they might not know. They might just, you know, it's, I know that it is an inner critic and, I have done work before where 
um, I've sort of ruled one piece not to have worked and, and a friend of mine said, oh, how, you know, looks, looks fine to me. <laughs> how do you gauge it? So I know that it is an internal kind of, for, for a lot of the time, it's an internal dialogue. I don't know the relevance, but it's important. Yeah, it's 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 really a subject. It's really a, 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 an issue also, and a decision uh, whether you are ignoring uh, the 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 um, let's say the 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 style or the 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 the, the final uh, the final uh, uh, appearance or the final look of the of your uh, marks or uh, or you or you you build it and you uh, program it and you are uh, calculating how it will be but I think uh, one of the most interesting things are, are like because it's a performative uh, thing it's always uh, turning uh, uh, there is uh, in one point uh, some unexpected things happening mm. to it, so, mm. uh, yeah I, th I think that I find that really interesting because, and, and I think you were at that conference, the drawing sonography conference around that um, we had online. Um, and that was really interesting, the discussions that were coming up and that the relationship between the rehearsal and the, the performance in live drawing practice. And um, some people there were very kind of, you know, in the moment and I'll just take something at hand. And I had quite a different approach um, where I was sort of had put materials through a series of kind of auditions before the performance. I guess, you know, as I said, I'm, I do like a certain level of control. So just the fact that there's enough sort of going on for me with the, the performative aspect. Um, but there's a number of workings or machinations that the audience doesn't see. A lot of things that are kind of, um, Hidden, and that might be, you know, it is, it's like a casting call. So you're doing a casting call for what's the paper that you're going to use. So you bring in lots of different paper and you try it out and you see what the surface is like. And then you, you, you try out lots of different um, materials and, and again, what speed and, and what tool are you going to use to put that material down on the paper and... Um, of course. Yeah. I'm seeing, I'm seeing this spot uh, behind you. And can I ask you to bring it closer, maybe? The, the drawing uh, with quite a lot of lines, which is a little bit uh, uh, different from other things. That, uh, oh, this one? Yes. Yeah. Is it uh, removable? Movable? Yeah, it's just removable. Um. Uh, this was a, a drawing that I was actually just doing in preparation. I was teaching a, a oh, I've got a, I'm coming towards this camera now. I was uh, teaching a drawing summer school paper and I was wanting to get the students to do embodied drawing. So again, um, looking at using the whole body um, in the marks. And it, this is quite a different, you know, just talking, talking about yeah. speed and gesture so this is a lot more kind of um violent <laughs> and also um, there is the erase erasing the erasing yeah. um i am quite interested in, in drawings as as uh this idea of of worked surfaces and and things that are surfacing or resurfacing um Quite often with a work, I feel like you get little glimpses of forms that have potential and then they might fall away or, or, or dematerialize. So there, there was always this kind of nearly sort of, I don't know, a semblance of form can suggest itself and then disappear. There's a very kind of uh, um, ephemeral aspect to drawing that um, it's quite nice to play around with in terms of considering the the surface whether that's through erasing or adding layers um absolutely mm -hmm. i think at that point i would like to open the, the discussion and to invite other people maybe to ask uh, lisa uh, some questions uh, 
if it's possible. Uh, do we have uh, some someone out there that would like to ask Lisa, uh, maybe about uh, the things that uh, we just saw, or maybe about other works of her? Uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask. Uh, Okay, so we have no volunteer here, <laughs> which is a... Uh, 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 hello. Okay, yes, hi, hi Angie. Um, um, Lisa, it's just wonderful seeing your presentation, especially about dance, because, you know, it's something I've been grappling with, working with in collaboration with um, a dancer um, and it's, I found it really interesting, which is the actual sense of what is going on and actually whether you're, whether I was depicting what was going on. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You have that kind of, I think you're sort of talking about, well, for me anyway, there was a part of, if I'm thinking back to life, <clears throat> life drawing, am I actually drawing the dancer's body as she is moving through these yeah. this the sequence of movements or am i drawing the sort of in a looser way the energy and the the mood and the feeling of the the piece itself yeah. is that kind of yeah yeah i i think that sure your actual images are, are absolutely beautiful i think Thank they you. work really well um, and that, you know, for me, it's a, an area that I'm particularly interested in. Yeah, I think <laughs> it, it, to me, it's this piece is, was quite refreshing because it's funny. I realised that it's the first time I've actually really drawn a, a dancer myself in a work like that. I had taken students to dance studios and had them drawing dancers, but myself actually drawing a body in motion that was the first time I had ever done that in a in a performance and it is quite different from a a seated still life um absolutely yeah. yeah 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 so that was the the conundrum or the question that sort of posed itself to me in the act of doing that last series of work was hang on am I drawing the because I'd kind of think back to life drawing mode or where where is her hip where is the angles and it's like no no she's moving too fast for that I've got to just sort of capture the sort of mirror in a way the energy and, and the move the movement yeah so that then starts taking it into a different level so yeah it goes somewhere else yeah I, I think it was interesting with um a parallel with the music as well because um I had drawn um, to uh, some of Simon's music much earlier, um, sort of when we first met each other, and I'd drawn to a, a quite a structured sort of uh, piece that he had composed for some other for some other people, and I was just practicing to it, and it was quite um, again not having a musical language, but it was quite traditional. So as I was drawing, and I drew to it a number of times, and I got to preempt it, and it was quite a soothing um quite you know enjoyable experience drawing to this this music that I that I came to know very well and then when we did he did the uh, we actually got to work together and he did a piece for me it was totally different it was like I guess you would call it much more um open or improv um sort of uh there wasn't a structure or a sense that I so there were gaps and then he'd make a note and it would kind of just come at me and so instead of being able to sort of preempt and be carried away by this lovely sort of la 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 I was sort of like, whoa this, this noise came out of here and this noise came out of here so again it's sort of mirroring that that body in motion the sounds rather than me being able to be carried away and, and draw along with them they were coming at me so fast that I was just having to kind of respond on the fly I and I think yeah it's kind of a a, a, a demanding but I think a rewarding way to work. Mm, absolutely. And I think also it makes you as the artist almost in a similar position as a dancer. You'd be 
you know, kind of mm. working with live mus musicians that it's, uh, you don't actually really know what's going to come at you. No. And, and again, it's coming back to these ways, these strategies, I guess, of having to remove, of removing the predetermined. So not being in that situation of going, hmm, what shall I do? Should I put a little bit of yellow here or a little bit of, you know, it's coming up with a strategy that releases you from that and just puts you in that mode of action. Yeah. So you're not kind of making these aesthetic decisions of where things should go. You're just kind of trusting to the, the, the process and yeah, it's Absolutely. kind of liberating and a bit scary yeah. <laughs> at the same time. Oh, it's great to see you anyway and great to see your work. Well, thank you. Thank you also. Um, anybody else would like to ask Lisa a question? You have somebody there? So, yeah, no on you. Um, I, I, I was thinking, uh, I was, uh, while you were uh, talking uh, just now, I was thinking about uh, color and black and white. I remember that you transfer in, in Draw to Perform, you transfer uh, the, the actions that you did on white uh, paper, you uh, reversed it and you did the uh, white chalk, I think it was, mm -hmm. on, yeah. uh, on, black, uh, on black paper. But, yeah. uh, but overall, do you, what's your, like, What's your, like, I will say it like this. What's your relation to color? Or are you, uh, are you, uh, um, are you finding yourself attracted more to working with black and white or it just doesn't matter? Yeah, I, I, I do love color. I have tried, um, I am trying to veer out. I just, I just, yeah, I, I think um, black and white is my kind of default. Um, I might bring in, uh, one or two colors. I think the drawing um, behind me there, I brought in a little bit of my favorite yellow of the moment. Um, again, just to kind of play with the surfacing of it. Um, I have another kind of body of work that I'm playing around with, with layering color, but no, I'm pretty much a monochromatic. <laughs> um, I enjoy color in other people's work. I just struggle with using it myself in a way that that satisfies me I think I may have got this video to work by just opening it in my email so maybe if I have a go at sharing my screen again we can have a Please have do. a look um, I just can do I share oh brilliant I'll just Ah, oh, don't do that. Where's it going?
Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing this with yeah. us. Oh, you're welcome. That was um yeah, it was really it was actually really fun to to do. And um it had you can probably hear in the sound, I, I just love the sound of uh, Simon's double bass. And what was nice in that you could hear, um, I think he had a few extra gadgets in there, like uh, uh, he was recording and building up a bit of a sonic texture as well. Yeah. So as the drawing progressively got fuller and denser, the sound, um, he was layering the sounds that he'd already drawn um, the, the he'd already made on top of each other, so we we kind of were mirroring each other in, in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really lovely. So by the end, it was a really kind of rich, um, not wall of sound, but yeah, had really built up. And the energy of that piece, as I was saying, was quite um, different to the last piece, which was much more kind of um, yeah. So this one is a different. Uh different action yes so this one was the one led by the dancer and she had much more um sort of short jerky violent kind of restrained and breaking free movements mm -hmm. um yeah so it was kind of fun as well and it, it just got kind of more and more um energetic it, sorry but it was in the same action or in a different action we, we called them turns, so they were, as in a kind of a musical thing, they were each 15 minutes long, and so this was um, the, the third turn, so uh, yeah, it built up over 15 minutes to, to something quite, um, yeah, quite energetic with the, the charcoal started snapping and breaking, and it was quite lovely because the wind was carrying the charcoal the particles of charcoal all around the, the table. So it was sort of like an animation <laughs> thanks to the, the famous Wellington wind that we have. Um, so just sort of added, added something to it actually in the end, I was a bit nervous about it. And this was the first piece, which um, as I said, Simon actually wasn't really playing the strings at all in that he was, um, well, for most of the, for a good part of it, he was whacking the outside of the case with his, with his hand. So using it more like a drum. So. I had to respond with, with my fingers sort of dipped in paint and I was kind of drumming in time to, to, uh, his, to the sounds that he was making. Um, yeah, and these, I guess, are, are studies that um, I did in the lead up, just sort of, as you say, auditioning different marks and materials. Some of them, like I really loved the marks that were here. Um, but I found that it, the ink wasn't drying in time for me to then add the next layer I wanted to. You know, for a 15 minute performance, you've got constraints that you, you might not necessarily have in a studio because you had to think about, I had these big kind of welts of ink that I then wanted to put another layer on, but they, they were still wet. So I had to kind of change it to different media, and different. Um, and here comes the color. Yeah, <laughs> this is my little foray into color run. <laughs> There's a little bit of color in there. Um, there's a close up of the marks that I was uh, making before. Um, these are some other marks. I really enjoyed uh, working with the, the tape and I thought that that would be a really kind of contrast to some of the other more softer movements, but just the act of applying tape, it just didn't work. In, in the performance, it was too kind of labored. So I, I did away with that, but um, yeah. But it's also a very interesting action, uh, option to work with the tape and the sound, the sound of the tape actually. Mm, I mm. had to uh, work with the sound of the tape when you talk or you, uh, yeah. That's what I read. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Lisa, I was just interested when you draw because you say um, that you're um, keen to have a satisfying outcome. When you're drawing, are you drawing blind? So you're looking at the dancer while you're drawing or are you actually um, working to the drawing as well? So you're trying to take in how the drawing's progressing as you're working. So you're kind of trying to respond to the, to the dance and the music, but at the same time, you're trying to judge 
the progress of the drawing? I think, um, no, not so much judging the progress of the drawing. I feel that there's not really time in the performance to do that. I think most of the judging is done um, in the rehearsal time, like in the lead up. So making sure that all the, all the parameters, perhaps, I know, you know, this paper works, this color of chalk, um, I'm going to use willow charcoal instead of compressed charcoal. Um, so I, I have done some sort of semblance or take on the drawing before, and then so that during the performance, um, I can just lose myself in the performance. I don't think straight in performances. I kind of, um, it might be my natural introvert state. I'm usually just sort of in a slightly, um, I don't know, you're on a different level, which again is interesting about what the performance brings. It is totally different to the rehearsal. I think I might occupy some sort of space of, I don't know, blind panic or <laughs> just, uh, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I don't think um, I'm looking at the drawing as, as, I'm as I'm doing it in the performance and judging it. Um, I'm just going with the, the flow. Most of the, the judging has happened before uh, that the performance has even started. So it's almost as if, like an athlete, you just train and perform, and then when the moment comes, you just, you're just in the moment and, and it all comes together. Yeah, yeah, I like that analogy of the athlete, yes. <laughs> You're amazing, um, Lisa. Thank you so much for, for talking about your process. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that, that, that's a good, I mean, joking aside, I think it is a good analogy of, of, of the athlete for, for performance because you do you, you, you do your training outside of it and then you just give yourself to the moment um, of the event, of the performance, and you, you are in a different kind of, mode I guess as, as an athlete in a race would be in a different mode than an athlete in, in training um, the performance is is you know the audience makes the performance something totally different you can never recreate that uh, that feeling um, in your studio space um, the audience and the environment and the space of the performance brings something quite unique to it I think Absolutely. Lisa, can I ask you to uh, show yourself? Oh, yes. <laughs> I would like to thank you. Uh, unless somebody else would like to ask a final question. I, I just wondered if um, you ever enter into a dialogue with the musician or the dancer, whether it becomes um, more of a dialogue than a response, just a, a, a response from yourself. Um, yes, yes, good, good question. I, uh, as I said, I've worked with um, Simon, the double bassist, um, before. I might just share my screen again, sorry, Ram, just to, to, to answer that question. Um, so um, I initially approached him because I had a, a work um, that I wanted to him to play for, which was this piece. Here, dirty edges and clean lines and it was a precursor to what I went over and took to Brighton for, for Ram's draw to perform and this was where I had a piece of paper and I wanted to trace around the the outside of the paper and create a series of folds and I worked with um, Ollie Blair uh, AV designer and he created this scenario where he um, we did a live feed of me drawing and projecting it back so I was kind of mirrored and the drawings that I were doing were, were mirroring themselves as well um, and it was actually the gallery uh, curator who who suggested oh have you thought, ever thought about working with a musician and um, I said oh, yeah, give it a go and so he hooked me up with with Simon and I approached that very as in this is the line I'm doing. I'm doing these turning this corner at the time. I want you to make sounds to follow these lines. So it was very kind of directive. I, I want you to make a sound that looks like this line. Um, 
And I quite like that because it sort of turned on its head, perhaps the more typical relationship where I'd seen where the drawer was responding to the music. I wanted to kind of flip it where the, the musician was responding to the, to the drawing. Um, and so he created these wonderful, um, it was really great having him there because this, this sort of mark drawing alongside, drawing the outside of the frame here was quite different to the fluid marks like I've demonstrated to you. There was friction, it was, you know, applying quite a lot of pressure and he did these very sort of scratchy friction sounding noises on the, on, on the strings that would change when I'd hit a corner. So that it resonated really well, the two of them together. Um, so after that, I was kind of interested in working with him again, but as you say, not, not being quite so directive and just saying, okay, so rather than me telling you what I want you to do, perhaps we can do something where we're having much more of a dialogue um, together. Um, and that piece um, came up out of, it was inspired by going to Brighton for Ram's Draw to Perform and seeing another artist there, Fule, wasn't it? Ram, the choreographer, and he was using this um, paper that um, calligraphy artists practice with. Um, basically, you draw on it with paper, with water, and the marks disappear. Um, oh, magic paper. He, magic paper, yeah. And he had this wonderful setup where he was on the space before me, and he had a rigged a, uh, what was it? It wasn't a trapeze, it was a, um, it was suspended from the roof. And he, he was dipping his socks into the bucket and drawing with his feet and swinging back and forth on the paper and creating these wonderful marks. Um, but I saw in, in, in the way that that paper, the mark faded to nothing, I saw that as having a kind of a graphic equivalence to a sonic note where you the, the, the note appears and then it, it leaves. Um, and so I got, I put that idea to Simon and we came up with this work together which is using that paper. Um, it's another video piece. These are stills from it. And over, it's a 16 minute work over which I will uh, draw these marks, which fade, the layers are changing as, as they're fading and I'm building it up. Um, and then about 16 minutes in, and likewise, Simon is building up the sonic sounds as well. Um, and then about 16 minutes in, we both stop and then the the drawing actually fades away to I don't know if I've got images of it the drawing fades away to nothing and the sonic notes that, that were at 16 minutes he just stretches out till they gradually fade away so there's this really nice this piece I think it's around it's nearly about arrivals and departures so it's nearly about me at first if you hear the music for this piece, it's very loose, sort of improvised. There's no kind of recognizable structure. So it's all about the sounds arriving and me dealing with them, but then as then it changes and then it's all about the sounds slowly kind of leaving. So that was really um, another rewarding to work with him to really sort of think about the temporality of sound and how mark and, and sound could, could work together and play with time time signatures like that okay we have to uh i think uh summarized it all and uh thank you for sharing this beautiful work with us and uh and open the door and uh, show us a little bit of uh, the place where you create the uh, those inspiring uh things and marks and uh, actions. Uh, thank you very much uh, to all of you who participated here and uh, uh, to all uh, those others uh, uh, online. Um, that's it, I think. It was really great. Uh, thank you, um, thank you for you. inviting me. I really enjoyed it and I hope one day to uh, be able to Come back in person. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Looking forward to it. And uh, looking forward to see you uh, next time in the next session. Actually, uh, it's uh, the 
third visit is supposed to um, supposed to be, I think, on the twenty first of this month uh, with artist uh, Merav Shin Ben Alon. Uh, she is an Israeli artist and a very good friend of mine uh, for a long time. And uh, this time we will talk uh, of different aspects of a uh, performative uh, drawing, uh, not relating to live action, but uh, more relating into uh, installation and uh, books and uh, much more. So thanks again, Lisa, for uh, with us. And thank you all. See you next time. Bye, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.